that tale in particular paralyzed everything I've said about the rooms. It, it, it epitomizes the very the, the outline of everything I said about the rooms. The Sigrifa Mall is the name of the Valkyrie. Her name is Sigrifa, not Brunhild. Brunhild is the name of the king of the Goths that fought Agnar. Okay. And that's the second tale of, of uh, Sigrid and Brunhild. They were, she was a princess and they were two kings, two princes, and they were fighting over her. This, this, uh, this tale, the, the Ballad of the Victory Bringer, it, it, doesn't it does speak of defending some things, but for the most part, it talks about succeeding in life. And I think there's, it's very important. And I, I think maybe I will start at the top and go through it all because it's, yeah, because it discusses the runes and the different aspect that they're just as equally as important. Yeah. So there's, So there's there's two there's two sections of the codex codex regius that are missing, but there's one story that still exists from those lost manuscripts, and that's the Sigrifa Mall in its entirety. It's also in the Volsen Saga, right? A version of it. <clears throat> so when you have when you think about okay, we've lost two books of the codex regius, which contains. The entirety of the lore that we we consider to be a part of our spirituality two books are missing and yet one story stuck around one story carried enough weight enough importance enough it was it was valid enough that it carried on somehow that in and of itself is an amazing thing okay but that also tells me to think there's some other shit here that needs to be paid attention to um but we start with, so this is after Sigrith has slayed the dragon. This is after he has killed Fafnir, loaded up his horse, horse horn went off. You know what, I've, I've gone over this a dozen times. I'm going to go through some of the key high points here. The, as he rode up to Hinderfjall, right? Hinderfjall, um, was like the home of the Franks, right? But he was on his way to the Gukung's home. Sigmund had a kingdom in the land of the Franks. The annotator probably knew the notion of the shield tower from reference to Hellerath Brunhilder. The flame girth tower was not uncommon. Mingloss Hall and Spitdag's Mall, the same thing is there. So there's a repeated element there, this flame, this tower of flame around the woman in waiting, around a woman's heart. Um, on the mountain, he saw a great light as a fire were burning and the glow reached up to heaven. And when he came thither, there stood the tower of shields and above it was a banner. Sigurd went into the shield tower and saw that a man lay there sleeping with all his war weapons. That's important to note. He saw a man laying there. He didn't see a woman. He saw a man laying there. And first he took the helm off, the helm of awe from his head. Now the helm of awe, I, I, I believe is a, is a largely figurative figure speech. That's the thing that we all walk around with. The persona, the atti attitude, perhaps, is a good term for it, that keeps people away from us. Like on a Monday morning, I don't want to deal with anybody. I got an angry look on my face. Stay away from me. I'm angry. I'm in a bad mood. You don't want to deal with me. <clears throat> it's our protection. It's how we protect ourselves. The helm of all has actually become something. It's actually made into something here. When he's fully in case in the helm of all, he cannot differentiate friend from foe or female from male. You have to wonder how much of that is a lingering remnant in today's society for men to constantly maintain the helm of all living in fear. And I, and I, I suspect that this idea of fear is not, is not gonna go over very well with several men, but that's, that's it. You know, they, they, they maintain the helm of all. You get men to beat their old ladies and so on and so forth. Then you saw that it was a woman. The male coat was as fast as if it had grown to her, 
to her flesh. Then he cut the male from her, head opening downward and out both the armholes. So he skinned her like a bear. Then he took the male coat from her and she awoke and sat up and saw Sigurd and said, what bit through the burning how has broken my sleep? Who made me free of the fetish pale? Sigmund son with Sigurd's sword that lay with flesh hath fed the ravens. He sat beside her and asked her her name. She took a horn full of mead and gave him a memory drop. And here's the Valkyrie's prayer. This is the, the perfect prayer insofar as everything we've been given with regards to the gifts given to us by Odin, Billy, and Bay. Hail the day, hail the sons of day, the night and her daughter now. Look on us here with loving eyes that waiting with victory and win. <clears throat> Sometimes in those difficult situations, the only damn thing we can do is wait. We're stuck somewhere. We don't know how to move forward. We don't understand what's going on. Now these, Esau, uh, you know, all of those things. We're just waiting. We're stuck in place, hanging on the tree as it were, waiting for our eagle to die. Um, waiting with victory win. Sometimes we got to be patient and deal with the situation. It takes time. And that's, it's important to understand that the day and the sons of day and the night and her daughter, those are very powerful primordial forces. Day and Deliger, Nought and Yord. And those are the mothers and fathers, those are the mothers and grandmothers of many of the deities that we have. Frey, Freya, Thor. <clears throat> They're all your children. Second part is hail to the gods and the goddesses hail. So we go from the primordial elements that govern our very lives, night and day, and the earth we live on, to the gods that represent so much of what we aspire to. And we remember, again, all the generous earth. Because every good thing that we deal with comes from this earth. Give to us wisdom and goodly speech and healing hands lifelong. Long, so in dealing with people, what really more can you ask for? I mean, it was, well, you need to be kind. You need to be forgiving. Um, people will abuse that shit. Give to us wisdom and goodly speech and healing hands lifelong. That's the real measure of the confidence of the individual. To have that wisdom to give a quality no without being angry, to have that goodly speech to encourage others to move along and move forward to step up and try harder, and healing hands lifelong. <clears throat> um, the first thing you grab when you meet somebody, you shake their hand. Is that a positive thing? That's our responsibility to make sure that it is. Her name was Sigurd Dreefa, and she was a Valkyrie. She said that two kings fought in battle. One was called Kjalman Gunnar, an old man, but a mighty warrior, and Othan would promise him the victory. And the other was Agnar, brother of Althan. None he found who fain would shield him. Sigurd Rifa slew Kjalman Gunnar in the battle, and Othan pricked her with a sleep thorn in punishment for this, and said that she should never thereafter win victory in battle, but that she should be wedded. And I said to him that I made a vow in my turn that I would never marry a man who knew the meaning of fear. Sigurd answered and asked her to teach him wisdom if she knew of what took place in all the worlds. So there is a theory written by Robert Jordan, Robert Johnson in a book called She, and it's, it's reiterated in another book called Lying with the Heavenly Woman, <laughs> discussing the feminine aspects of masculinity. Nobody wants to talk about that. Um, we were supposed to be hyper-masculine and powerful. Men are not well suited to negotiate the paths of emotional stress. They're not well suited to deal with the, um, the very idea of emotion. It is always a woman that provides that guidance. And we see that right here. People are going to take issue with that. I, I know how to deal with that. Okay, so you're working on your third marriage. You're doing, you're really fire on all cylinders, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, how's your daughter look when she's she, when she's out? Is she a happy child? Is she a caring child? Is she a considerate child? <clears throat> um, these are the kind of things that that are very difficult to understand for men. Um, and likewise, just as Odin and Sigurd Rifa, her father, for all intents and purposes, pricked her with a sleep thorn. He poisoned her in her judgment of men, and it led to a lifetime of loneliness. A lifetime of being bound within a circle of fire that she that was there to protect her. <clears throat> These kind of things show up and they're 
they're very powerful when we realize what they mean. And once again, that, that leads us to the idea that, uh, that this woman is gonna provide a light of inspiration to this very powerful, competent warrior man, right? First thing she does, beer I bring thee tree of battle, mingled of strength and mighty fame, charm it holds and healing signs, spells full good and gladness runes. I don't know what they all are, but she goes through all the runes. The winning runes learn if thou longest to win, runes on thy sword hill, right? Some on the furrow and some on the flat, and twice shalt thou call on tear. This is another reference to remind us that tear is not the god of justice, tear is the god of war, right? He is the grandfather that will sacrifice his right hand to handle the business he's created to protect his family. All right, ale runes learn what lies with the wife of another betray not thy trust. On the horn shalt thou write in the back of thy hands, and need shalt thou mark on thy nails. Now these on the nails. Thou shalt bless the draw and danger escape and cast a leak in the cup. For so I know never that thou never shalt see thy mead mixed with, with evil. There's your protection against evil. <clears throat> Birth runes, the babe for the mother to bring. On my palms, shut thou right them around my joints and ask the fates to aid. You have to wonder what those birth runes might be. I suspect it's Burkano, Magus, Dagos, Othala. These runes of entering a new world around on the palm of the hands, around the wrists and ankles and elbows. Uh, what a sight that must have been in ancient times to see a mother giving birth decorated in runes in such a primal fashion. But, you know, back then they did all the help they could get. Wave runes learn if thou wouldst shelter the sail steeds out to the sea. On the stem thou shalt write and the steering blade and burn them into the oars. Though high be the breakers and black the waves, thou shalt safe the harbor seat. Lagu is the only one I can think of there. Branch, rune learns, branch runes learn if a healer would be and cure for wounds would work. On the bark shalt thou write and on trees that be with bows to the eastward bent. Um, this is going to be your willow tree, your willow and your beech, um, beech, birch water, percano again. Birch water is supposed to be full of all kinds of wonderful stuff, maple syrup the willow tree providing aspirin and the basic pain reliever, salicylic acid. <clears throat> Speech rooms learn that none may seek to answer harm with hate. Well, he winds and leaves them all and sets them side by side. At the judgment place for justice there, the folk shall fairly win. What is a speech room that would speak justice? So willow, is it always supposed to be victory? Or should it be Algae's protection? Or should it be Awas, the Axis Monday? Or should it be year? Should it be um, Perthrow, the Lock Cup? Should it be the Harvest? What are the things that we would speak at a judgment place um, to leave that judgment up to a higher authority? Bragi has the runes carved on his. Is it his tongue? Slapnir has them on his teeth. Bragi has them on his tongue. Thought runes learn if all shall think thou art keenest minded of men and Sue's. Then Hropped arranged, and then he wrote, and then and then in thought he made. Out of the drop that down had dropped from the head of Hythropnir and the horn of Hadrofnir. Okay. Who are those two people? Well, is light Hythropnir is light dropper, and Hrodnafir is treasure owner. These are names for Mimir, Mim, Mim's well, Mimir. On the mountain he stood with Bremer's sword, on, on his head the helm he bore, and first the head of men spoke forth and the words of truth it told. So those are the runes that he covered his head with to get that wisdom, to contain that wisdom. These are the runes of, of the, these are the thought runes. Right? How do we know another's thoughts? He bade right on the shield before the shining goddess, Arvax ear and on Elizabeth's hoof, on the wheel of the car and of Hrungnir's killer, on Slightmir's teeth and the straps of the sledge, on the paws of the bear and on Bragi's tongue. This is a wholly distinct rune chant. This is entirely something, uh, it's unusually long. Shield, his violin, his cooling stands in the front of the sun, right? 
so we don't get burned up. Arbok means early waker, and Owl's Vit means all swift, the horses that draw the sun's car. So this is dealing with the sun. This is dealing with Suna. Okay, this is, um, this is so Wheelow in essence. Rungnir, the slayer of the giant hung Rungnir was Thor. Um, it might, but it might not have said hung Rungnir. It's kind of in bad shape. Slapnir has it on his teeth, perhaps, uh, and Bragi is the god of poetry, like I said earlier. On the wolf claw's head and the eagle's beak, on bloody wings and the bridge's end, on freeing hands and helping foot footprints, on glass and on gold and on goodly charms, in wine and in beer and on well-loved seats, on Gungnir's point and on Grani's breast, on the nails of the Norns and the night owl's beak. Some of the few references we have to owls in the war. As a matter of fact, it may be the only reference that I know of of owls in the war. Shave off where the runes of, that were of old were written and mixed with the holy mead and sent all ways so wide. So the gods had them, so the elves got them, and some for the wain so wise, and some for mortal men. This is Odin getting the runes from getting the three <clears throat> getting the three drinks from Grautmir. Beach runes there are, birth runes there are, and all the runes of ale. Okay. And magic runes of might, who knows them rightly and reads them true, has them to himself to help ever they aid till the gods are gone. So there's the wisdom that she shared with him. She shared with him an understanding of the way things work in the world, an understanding of the runes and the path of life. So all of those represent some aspect of life. Now, <clears throat> there's a missing stanza here because after that's done, she tells him of the runes and she's, so she's given him this wisdom, how to negotiate this transition in life of becoming his, her partner. Because there's, there's a warning that's left out of that. There's a warning that's left out of this union between, between <coughs> Sigurd Rifa and, and Sigurd, right? The ballad of the victory bringer in him. And as the story goes on, it comes, becomes fully apparent. And she asks him, she says, now shalt thou choose for the choice is given. Thou tree of the biting blade, speech or silence. It's thine to say, our evil is destined to all. So she's already told him everything it says. And it says right there that uh, the poem to which stanzas two and four belong of introductory enough, in the intervening lost stanzas, uh, Sigurd has, Sigurd, has evidently warned Sigurd of the perils that will follow if he swears loyalty to her. Hence the choice to which he here refers, right? The tree of battle means warrior. <clears throat> so this is where the man steps up to the plate. So we know where the woman provides inspiration and guidance. She's going to see things he's not going to see. She's going to be perceptive of, of the children's varying moods and feelings. She's going to be perceptive of the situation that she's in. She'll be aware of things or people because that's what they do. Sigurd has a choice to make. It's going to be particularly challenging to be with this woman. <clears throat> he says, I shall not flee, though my fate be near. I was not born a coward to be. <clears throat> the loving word for mine will I win as long as I shall live. It's a hell of a statement, isn't it? And it speaks as much to emotional courage as it does to anything else. Physical prowess and battle-tested battle, battle strength. Okay. But the courage to try to win the love of the partner you're promised to, how might things change in this world if that were the case? And he begins to talk some of the things that he's learned. These are some of the things that he has to act like. And first I read that free of guilt toward kinsmen thou ever thou art. No vengeance have though they work thee harm. Reward after death shalt thou win. So right there, he's, he's, he's ridding himself of the kind of resentments that haunt the thought process of men in relationships. Don't carry that shit. I'm free of guilt. No vengeance have, though they work thee harm. Now, this is antithetical to much of cultural behavior in the, uh, in the ancient days. Right? Somebody did you wrong, you had the right to take their head. Um, 
the first laws that were put down in, in, by the Franks uh, sought to put a stop to this rival killing. We see it today in gang wars. And then second, I read thee to swear no oath. If true, thou knowest it not. So an oath is a, is a weird thing because everyone wants to swear an oath, but it's a two-way street. If you swear an oath to someone, they're providing you with something. If they fail and you fail, it creates all kinds of resentment. Bitter the fate of the breaker of troth. And poor is the wolf of his word. So if both individuals fail to live up to their obligations of an oath, um, both individuals are going to go about whining about it, probably on social media, <clears throat> about they did this and they did, I was justified. And stuff. Yeah, we get it. Um, it doesn't engender a positive approach to many things. It takes a long time to get past. Then third, I read thee that thou at the thing shalt fight not in words with fools. For the man unwise of worse of word than he thinks doth utter awful. So if you're sitting there arguing with a fool and he pisses you off and you start running your mouth, now you've done it. And hell, we've all done it. We've all got tied up with some nonsense on the internet about some jackass that's probably baiting us to run our mouth. And then we go ahead and do it. And Ben Franklin said, real simply, it's better to let people think you're a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Okay. Ill it is, if silent thou art a coward, born men call thee. And truth may have tell, seldom, is safe, seldom safe is fame, unless wide renown be won. On the day thereafter, send him to death. Let him pay the price of his lies. So it's kind of a chaotic and obscure jumble of lines. Um, but it's been that's been improved by various editors throughout the time through for a couple thousand years now. It's dangerous to keep silent too long as men may think you a coward. But if anyone taunts you falsely because of your silence, don't argue with him. Next morning, go over and kill his ass. <laughs> Prove that he is a liar. <laughs> Simple enough thing to do. I wouldn't recommend in today's day and age. We have whole buildings full of individuals and law enforcement dedicated to stopping that and the eradication of secret documents held in safes <laughs> and political oppression. Fourth, I read thee, if thou shalt find a wily witch on thy road, it is better to go than her guest to be, though, though night enfold thee fast. Um, yeah, um, a couple of rules in life for young men. The one, don't break the tequila. Nothing good happens after midnight and women are powerful creatures. And if a young man can figure that part of it out, he might make it to 25 because before 25, you can kill yourself on accident, right? <laughs> so eyes that see need the sons of men who fight and battle fierce, off which is evil sit by the way who blade and courage blunt. So there's another line uh, that Odin tells Sigurd when he's engaged in, the, uh, in going to slay the dragon. Uh, don't look up in the middle of battle, or maybe it's in the half a moment. Don't look up in the middle of battle. If you're in the middle of, so, so if you were to put that into a movie reference, if you watch the Battle of the Bastards of Game of Thrones, where he's just shooting everybody, everybody that's out there, they're just loosening the arrows. They're going to kill them all. <laughs> he has the men to waste. And he wastes every bit of them, right? If you were to look up in the middle of that battle, and see the stack of bodies and the arrows still coming. Do you think that after you got done pissing your pants, you would be able to stand and fight or that you would run? This is a very challenging thing for every man and nobody knows that. It's like I was telling, telling my friend this morning, there, there are no atheists in foxholes, none. Don't look up in the middle of that battle. Keep moving forward, flag forward. <laughs> It will blunt your courage and blade. And then blame it on a woman. <clears throat> you got to remember, in the very old times, the Valkyries were terrifying, hideous scavengers of the battlefield. Not the beautiful things that we think of them today. Then fifth, I read thee, though maidens fair, thou seest on benches sitting, let the, sliver of, set, let the silver of kinship not rob thee of sleep, and the kissing of women beware. Yeah, that goes back to my first three rules. I'll drink the tequila. I think good happens after midnight. 
and women are powerful creatures. In six, I read thee, if men shall wrangle and they'll talk rise to wrath, no words would the drunken warrior have, for wine steals many men's wits. <laughs> I always heard it that if a, drunk, a drunken man's words is a sober man's thoughts. Um, Brawls and ale full oft have been an ill to many a man, death for some and sorrow for some, full many of the woes of men. We have a guy up here right now, last week he, he left a bar and a woman left a bar in front of him and she shot a U-turn to go back to the bar because she forgot something and he drifted across the line, head on collision, boom, she's dead. Now he's got vehicular manslaughter. Turns out she was a good friend of his that he worked with. <coughs> now he's going to deal with that. Now he's going to prison for seven years, at least. He shit's done. He's on suicide watch and all kinds of things. Um, death for some and sorrow for some full many of the woes of men. You can have a good time getting drunk, but every time and every time you pay for it. In seventh, I read thee, if battle thou seekest with a foe that is full of might, it is better to fight than to burn alive in the hall of the hero rich. So if, if you have a foe, an opponent that's powerful, don't sit in your wealthy house waiting for them to come to you. Go out there and meet them. It's better to go out there and die in battle than to sit there and be burned alive in your house. Ninth, I read thee, burial render if thou findest a fallen corpse, of sickness dead or dead in the sea, or dead of weapons wounds, a bath shalt thou give them who corpses be, and hands and head shalt wash, wipe them in comb, ere they go in the coffin, and pray that they sleep in peace. This is this is a powerful thing because. You have to remember that at the time that some of this was being spoken and told in oral tradition, we were still sacrificing warriors. We would throw all of their weapons in the river because obviously their weapons weren't any good because they lost the war. They all got thrown in the river. <clears throat> and, the and the captured warriors were sacrificed, right? Sacrifice for a victory. But if you find somebody that's dead, somebody that's fallen along the way, do the right thing. I guess it speaks of human decency, but it also speaks to those individuals that are dead on the inside. We have people walking around literally dead on the inside. Um, reach out a hand. Be that man or that woman that's capable of being strong enough to do that. <clears throat> Tenth, I read thee that never thou trust the word of the race of wolves. If his brother thou broughtest to death, or his father thou didst fail. Often a wolf and a son there is, though glad gold he gladly takes. So if you, if you, this is like don't make friends with your, your foe. If some of your friends are don't like somebody, um, and you've taken them out, <clears throat> you can't be friends with their, their kids. Because that, that, that will always bite you in the ass. Eleventh, I read thee that wrath shalt thou son and treachery falls with thy friends. Not long the leader's life shall be for greater the foes he faces. You got to be a straight dealer when you're at the top. So all of these things are some, these are the things he said. Now, how can we, how can we compare those to the wisdom that the Sigurdrifa brings to the table with regards to the rooms? She shared with him the very path of life. And he is sitting here saying, all right, I'm going to straighten up and not be a drunken brawler in the street, fucking around, acting an ass, right? This is his obligation to stand up straight and do the right thing. And it ain't always easy. Uh, but this is his commitment to her. This is the choice that he makes to stand up and do the right thing. <laughs> she gave him that wisdom without any expectation of anything in return. He is demonstrating here, so he says, I shall not flee, though fate be near. I was born not a coward to be. The loving word from mine will I win as long as I shall live. Right? If you're sitting around plotting vengeance, if you're swearing half-ass oaths, if you're fighting with idiots at the thing or social media, 
if somebody calls you a coward, you, you ignore it and you keep moving your way and the next day you take care of business. If you, if you uh, run into a witch on the road, go the other way. If you see the, if you get in a fight, don't look up. <clears throat> don't dally with the girls. Don't get drunk in the bar and fight. Um, <laughs> don't be bought, don't be brawling in the bar. Don't be, uh, if you want to see, if they're coming to your house, you better go out and meet them. That's, you know, you've got to protect your household. Um, take not a maiden or the wife of man, nor lure them on to lust. The Nidhogg gnaws upon the corpses of three types of people. The murderers, men who murder their fathers, um, oath breakers, and the deceivers of men's wives. Those three individuals, Get gnawed upon for eternity by Nidhogg and Niflheim at the roots of Yggdrasil in a pit of vipers. <clears throat> that's their fortune. That's their, that's what they get. So, um, so do the right thing with regards to those less fortunate. This here speaks of the dead. Um, if you, you don't, don't be fooling, if you're going to take somebody out, you can't be inviting their sons into your home. Battle and hate and harm, he thinks, full seldom fall asleep. Wits and weapons, the warrior needs the boldest of many would be. Don't be treacherous if you're at the top. And if you're, if you're the leader, you need to have good friends around you. These are the words of a, of a man that's trying to live up to a standard with regards to this partnership that's flourishing between him and this demigoddess. And she's told him, look, man, it's, this is liable to really suck. You're, it's liable to really be very hard. We don't have exactly what she says, but the but the tale is there. <laughs> it's no different from any other woman today. Not any different. Every one of them. Look, I mean, all of you guys know, and the people that listen to this later on, every woman has a tale of being abused, beaten, raped, assaulted, all kinds of things. But you will never meet a man who will tell you he's done that kind of shit. So when we look at the Sigurdrifa Mall, the Ballad of the Victory Brand, Okay, so she's taught him the stuff that helped him shape the world and, the, and given him that inspiration that, yeah, maybe she does know a little bit. Maybe this is the partner I can walk forward with. Okay, if I'm going to do that, how am I supposed to act? There's some real powerful stuff here. So we've lost two books of the Codex Regius, and yet this tale right here that tells us how to be in a relationship still exists. Holy shit right there in front of us. This is an important thing to consider when we look through and read all these fancy words. <clears throat> what does that mean? Why would they say that? How do I use that in this world? Now, people are going to process this in all kinds of different ways. But the fact of the matter is, once again, we're looking at our lore and we're finding the very instructions we need to live life that we were supposed to live. You see all kinds of bullshit out here about people talking about this, that, and the other, and they're flying, everything they're doing is flying in the face of this basic instruction here. Um, Gordon Peterson said real clearly, a man should be a monster. He should be a monster. And Sigurd is that monster. Hell, he slayed a dragon. But when he's sitting down with her, now we have what the real man should be like. <clears throat> now, do I have any rights to talk about that? Probably not. And he lived up to it for the fuck most of the time. But I see it. And everybody else that sees it sees their obligation as well now. And that's where all the good things start with wisdom and goodly speech and healing hands like that. That's where it starts. Does anybody have any questions on any of that? Because that's some powerful stuff. Nope. Okay. What do you think, Melissa? Breaking up. You're breaking up. I can't hear it. No. 
Tall digital. Sorry. There you go. Hold it out the window a little bit. Hold it high like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I would like to hear what you have to say. Maybe we we'll talk about it later. I am uh, going to get off here and um, clean up because uh, I've got some things I've got to take care of to further my education and make myself a better man and probably and try to write a book worth reading. So I hope everybody appreciated that. I hope everybody enjoyed it. It'll be on my Patreon later tonight and uh, we'll go from there. All right, tomorrow's Monday. Let's all go out there and grab it by the nose and whip its ass. Thanks, Brian. Hey, thank you, Renee. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.